Welcome, everybody. It's Coffee Shop Thursday. Hey, there's... See something strange going on here? Yep, there's a mountain of stuff behind me that I have to go through and get cleaned up. But look, I still have the ashes on my forehead from Ash Wednesday. Ashes that remind us that we are finite people. From dust we came, to dust we shall return. But also... We are also reminded through that that it is God who raises us up in the first place from the dust by breathing his life into that dust man, that dirt man, Adam, us. And he will do the same at the last day, at the time of the resurrection. So, good stuff. That's why I wanted to leave it on for just a little bit. But at the same time, it's Coffee Shop Thursday, right? So, what we need to do is take a good look at the scripture passage that is coming up for this Sunday from the Gospel of Mark, first Sunday in Lent. It's Mark chapter 1, verses 9 through 15. Uh, essentially, it's just three things. One, Jesus is baptized by his cousin John. Number two, Jesus is tempted in the wilderness. And number three, Jesus goes out and begins his ministry, proclaiming that the kingdom of God is near. Seems so simple, right? Yeah, let's just read through it and get on with the rest of Mark. Whoa, hold the phone. I mean, come on. I'm going to ask everybody here at our, the coffee shop. Uh, so what do you think? What is there anything in there that kind of looks kind of uh, kind of weird or strange or something we should dive into? Hmm. Yeah, Karen has something over there. It's... Uh, Okay, Jesus was baptized by John in the Jordan. And why was he baptized? Uh, we kind of talked a little bit about this in January, the baptism of Jesus. It is kind of a thing where, you know, why? Why was he baptized? Because John was baptizing for the forgiveness of sins. Why would Jesus need that? Well, he didn't. But remember, what, what sins were the people being baptized for? You see, when you sinned, you could go to the temple and offer up a sacrifice to take care of those sins. Day of Atonement, big day for the Jewish people. So you didn't need John's baptism to do that. Maybe what we needed was forgiveness of living into and compromising our values as people. And now taking on the values of a society around us that weren't God-pleasing at all. Yeah, in that case, Jesus is identifying with the people who are doing that and saying, I'm all in too, because that's why I came to free us, to liberate us from any of the economic or political or religious things that weigh us down as God's people and keep us from being the people that we should be, that God intended us to be. So yeah, Jesus was baptized, but there's something that's interesting about that. It says, Jesus was baptized by John in the Jordan. Now, all the people were baptized by John in the Jordan as well. Only the word that's used with Jesus is a little bit different from the one used from the people. You don't see it in English. You see it in the Greek. In, in the Greek, it's N, which is our N, for the people. For Jesus, it's ice which is into, into, is the gospel writer Mark telling us that there's something different about Jesus' baptism than from that of the others? Hmm, I think that might be the case, right? That just might be, what, Jesus was entering into a whole new baptism. So more than just for the forgiveness of sins, but to lead us out into a new way of living. Aha. Uh -huh. Hey, let's just keep that in mind. Uh, coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. See, the people had believed that the heavens were now closed, that there was no more communication with God. All of a sudden, it's ripped open again. And we'll see the same words used at the very end of the gospel when the curtain temple is ripped. So, the Spirit is now unleashed on this world one more time. And you have the voice that comes from heaven. You're my son, the beloved. And it's interesting. 
keep in mind, all of this happening is only happening to Jesus. Only he hears this going on uh, in the Gospel of Mark. And it's not until we have what we had last Sunday with the transfiguration that once again, that word is spoken from heaven. But only this time, the disciples hear it as well. All right. So the baptism of Jesus. How about the temptation of Jesus? And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. Anybody have anything to, to say about that? You know that word, drove him out into the wilderness? That's a pretty powerful word. Basically, it means Jesus didn't have a choice. He kind of got kicked out into the wilderness by the Spirit. You think the Spirit doesn't give us a choice sometimes? Isn't that a scary thought? It's a an interesting thought. Maybe the Spirit leads us in the ways that, no, no, I don't want to do that. But it's so powerful that we can't resist. That's the force of the word drove. Even Jesus couldn't resist it if he wanted to. Out into the wilderness he went, and he was there for 40 days. Yeah. Remember the Israelites, when they were leaving uh, Egypt, they spent 40 years in the wilderness? Well, that's when they got all toughened up in order to make their way into the promised land. Yeah, they had some some work to do, some spiritual work as well as physical on spiritual work on the inside in their hearts. And um, yeah, so Jesus himself had to spend 40 days in the wilderness. And what was happening while he was out there? He was tempted by Satan. He was with the wild beasts and angels came and waited on him tempted by satan you're going to see that same word tempted being used three more times in the gospel of mark and each time it's people it's people who are tempting him the exact same word and in the gospel of mark we're not told what those temptations are you have to go to matthew and luke to see that it's just good enough for mark that he was tempted angels waiting on him who else did the angels wait on oh remember when elijah was running away from jezebel thought he was gonna die he did all that complaining before god i'm the only one that's left angels came and ministered to elijah angels came ministered to jesus and then the last part of the gospel anybody want to read that oh now after john was arrested jesus came to galilee proclaiming the good news of god yep and what did he say? Anybody? Yeah, over there, Judy. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Holy mackerel. This is so loaded that we can't even begin to uncover everything that's packed into that sentence. Some of it is what John the baptizer was saying. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near right? Repent. Believe in the good news. We've talked about good news before. That was what amounted to the announcement of a, a conquering hero, a conquering general, conquering Caesar coming into town. Hey, here's the good news. Well, the good news is that, hey, that's not happening anymore. It's Jesus has come into town and God is doing a new thing through him. And what's interesting about all that is the tense of the verbs. We don't often pay attention to that too much. We talk about, oh, the present tense, that's what's happening right now. The past tense, oh, that was yesterday. In the future, well, hopefully that'll be tomorrow, right? But there's other tense ver um, verb tenses in different languages. And Greek has a whole slew of them. One of them is the perfect. And... In the perfect tense, something happened in the past, but it has implications and is going on right now in the present as well. And that also means it's going to be happening in the future. It's just going to keep going on and on and on. That's these verbs. Time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. It, it's been going on for a long time. In the whole history of the people of Israel, it's been going on. But now. Now it's come to its fulfillment in the person of Jesus Christ. The kingdom of God is here right now. So believe that good news. Believe it. Because it is 
good news. It's the best news we'll ever hear. It's the good news that's going to get Jesus in a lot of trouble. It's the good news, as we're going to see in our journey during Lent, that takes him to the cross. But it's also the good news that brings us life. Well, enjoy your coffee. This is my nice uh, travel mug that I use, and it's great. I bring it to church every Sunday, too, because I can bring it in here at 7.30 in the morning when I get here to open things up and get ready for our first service. And by the time we're leaving at about 11, 11 15 after our second service, if I have any coffee left in here, it's still hot. It is awesome. It is God's gift to me. God's blessings be with you. And take a look at this gospel lesson ahead of time before you come to church or before you watch us virtually on Facebook, our Facebook page at Zion, Mark 1, 9 through 15. So jam-packed with good stuff, it's almost unbelievable. But as Jesus said, believe it. God's blessings. We'll see you later.